Well, hello. Good evening. It is Wednesday, the 11th of December, in the year of our Lord 2013. Not too far away from Christmas, actually. It's, uh, it's 14 days until Christmas. Or, if you're an insomniac, three more sleeps. <laughs> Sounds about right. And I know exactly what that means. Tonight, it's, it's, it's Sav and me. And we are confused. Mm -hmm. um, news is flowing thick and fast in all kinds of different directions. And, and word coming from hither and yon, from there and here, from all over the place. And I have to say, I'm having a great deal of difficulty, no, difficulty, in sorting it all out. Now, there was a challenge for me to do the whole of the show tonight as Stanley Unwin. It's not going to happen. Um, we, we need your help. We do. Because I need to think things through. Um, I've had a little bit of whispers on the grapevine, shall we say, that have come from various different sources, none of which I'm going to name. And I'm just going to muse upon what I have been hearing. And I want to I want to kind of get a lot of input from chat tonight because I'm going to try and analyse all of this information that's pouring in from all different sides. And under normal circumstances, I'd have had a couple of days to do it. And I haven't. So I'm going to do it now, live. This is rumination on the fly. So chat, I need your help. Um, and we'll see how it goes from there. And that will all happen on the only programme that I'm aware of that's known as VT Talk. Yes, that little thing under the, the back end of the titles, because e-cigs matter. They matter worldwide, and it's a queer one, is this one. Um, earlier on this evening, starting at 7 o'clock, in the United States of America, the FDA did a webinar. And Sav and I were sitting listening in on this, and it also had uh, what they called closed captions. Wherein they said, effectively, Mitch Zeller, this is the guy that's come in at the top end of all of this, has said that they're going to regulate e-cigs in the United States as a tobacco product. Which is more or less where the proposals that we'd heard about in Trilog were pretty much cited. The proposals that there'd be no refillables and so on and so on and so forth. But Trilog in the EU, during the course of today, apparently has had another set of proposals going in from and just it's a conversation now we've got to put all of this into context have we not Sav? yes we have because back in the dark ages before twitter the internet facebook vttv and all of the other social media that we're used to we wouldn't have had a clue what was going on in trilogue they are effectively confidential meetings where three sides, hence the try, get together and bash out, well, I think A, I think B, you should both think C, and they end up with D, a compromise of some description. And like all compromises, there is no such thing as a perfect compromise, because what suits in the compromise suits one part, it won't suit the other, and vice versa. The thing that we've got to remember in all of this, of course, is that Trilog is not final. This is not a final decision. This is not a yes or a no. This is a how's about. That's what this is. And going back however long, we wouldn't have had a clue until it had got to the point where all of the Trilog negotiations had completed and a set of proposals were presented to the European Parliament on one side and to the Council of Ministers on the other. And all of the intermediate stages, the, the, the fighting and I want 50, I want 10, I want 45, I want 15, all of that stuff we would have known nothing about because they just wouldn't have been published. But when it got to the end, we'd know. 
And what we've found over the last couple of three weeks is that we are being made privy, thanks to small pinholes and what have you here, there and everywhere, to the process of what goes on in Trilog. Now, that doesn't necessarily fill me with deep joy. Stanley Unwin. But it does give us a, a bit of an insight as to what's been going on. And I've been hearing, for instance, that as of today, at any rate, there is the notion that refillables that were going to be outlawed last week might now be allowed. That flavours, which last week might have just been in our tea type flavours, blueberry, mint, spearmint and whatever, might now be up to member states to regulate. That, in fact, there could be talk of a review, which basically means, as I understand it at any rate, that it's eminently possible that all of the e cigarette stuff could just be kind of put in a parcel and looked at in a couple of years' time, bearing in mind what the market has produced, how things are going, what the, uh, the due diligence in watching what's happening, what's going on, pans out. So I kind of don't really want to go too far into what's being suggested and, 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 and stuff like that because there is a further meeting on Friday, an informal informal trilogue, which is going to just bang a few bits and bobs about. And then there's another trilogue on the 16th, the day after the 15th, when the big Twitter bomb is set up for. And on the 16th, they're kind of hoping that they're going to pull everything together and they can come up with a set of recommendations or proposals, whatever you want to call it, that will go off to the European Parliament and off to Council and they'll have their little palavers and then it'll be voted on in both and if they agree fine and if they don't agree not fine but really we're at a situation now where it's impossible to predict what's going to happen because it seems to be changing as you said earlier on Sav day to day hour to yeah. hour minute to minute stuff is changing and largely what we're hearing is rumour but if you were watching on Sunday night when I was sitting on Dave's tackle box with Dave Kitson, we were trying to find out what everybody thinks proper bespoke regulation ought to look like. So call this a consultation, if you will. I want to know from you what you think bespoke ASIG regulation ought to look like. And let me give you one or two broad headings to look at. First off, advertising restrictions. Do there need to be any? And if so, why? Second, nicotine concentration in juice. Assuming that, you know, the likes of the squip and everything else is still going to be available, and we'll come to that. What level of nicotine concentration would you like to see? Bearing in mind that there's likely to be opposition to home mixing. But we also need to bear in mind how many people mix their own. So that's the second one. The third one is flavours. Now, I, I have no clue who decides what is a flavour that is attractive to a child, but not attractive to an adult, or what is a flavour that's attractive to an adult, but not attractive to a child. And again, I would like your thoughts um, on, on, on things like that. I would also like your thoughts, if you would, on names, names of juices, you know, uh, like Sex on the Beach or uh, Long Slow Screw Against the Wall, you know, the, the kind of thing, we have a joke about that kind of thing, but let's be a little bit serious. I want to know your thoughts on that, and we'll kind of take it from there. And while you gather your thoughts and stuff gets typed in, I want to introduce you to a website which has been set up in the United States of America. And for that reason, you can understand why it's called the American Vaping Association. Now this has just surfaced and they also have a Twitter account as you will be able to see um, 
the URL is very simple vaping.info vaping.info and this is a site that is created for the sole purpose of positive media advocacy for vaping and electronic cigarettes we feel that it's very important to get the message out to the masses that millions worldwide have made the switch to vaping and that electronic cigarettes are one of the greatest harm reduction products that's ever been created. We want to educate the general population about vaping and give them true and accurate information. One of the best ways to do this is through mass media. Now, there's going to be a European version of that site as well. That's going to be as an adjunct to it. But what they need from you as vapers is your testimonial. They need you to go there and tell your story. Not difficult to do and very handy because, as Sav and I heard earlier, what was the quote that we got? What, what, what was it that Mitch Zeller said? Can you remember, Sav? Oh, I can't off the top of my head, no. It was, it was something along the lines of, if I, if I remember correctly, uh, that they didn't intend to regulate as a harm reduction vehicle. That's right, yeah. They saw it as a cessation vehicle. So, what's happening in Europe is now also happening in the United States. And you can bet your bottom dollar that the FDA and the MHRA are giving it that. Yep, 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 rabbit, rabbit, yep, 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 buddy, 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 rabbit, talking to each other. And they'll be coming up with the same sort of things. The fight has gone global. Absolutely has. So the American Vaping Association at vaping.info needs your help. Needs you to go. Needs you to tell your story. Because seriously, what happens over there will affect what happens over here. And what happens over here will affect what happens over there. In fact, in truth, it's true to say we are all in this together worldwide absolutely worldwide um right sav they've had loads of time to tap stuff in what we got they have and i've tried to grab i have no <coughs> way i've been able to grab everything but i've grabbed as much as i can and we'll start with um silent 79 says refillables are essential okay fergus mason says well, 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 I'm, I'm writing this down i'm writing this down oh <laughs> Right, is Philip, I'll, in fact, I'll go to, go to do or come. Right, your fillable is essential. Yeah, Fergus Mason, 72 milligram, no limits on flavours. Okay. Blaze has said, watershed regulations for advertising because young brains get wired by nicotine. Okay, now I wanna, I'm going to make a note of that one because I want to talk a bit, a bit more about that. Yeah. Okay. Very boring said, advertising should be worked on at state levels with stated regulations, but limitations on content and claims is likely good. Okay, okay. Uh, Jan, advertising after watershed, 72 milligram, no limit on flavours. Uh huh, that's what's two for that, yeah. Uh, Ashmal Pass, flavour should be allowed. Concentrate suppliers should provide full breakdown of contents and whether or not they're safe to vape. Oh, good, right. Hang on, concentrate suppliers. Okay, yeah, got that. Mark Shaw says, I think Nick level should stay the same. It's fine as it is um, over 75 milligram, ne milligram needs a license. People are hardly dropping like flies, but I could live with 50 milligram. Flavours is a no-go, leave it as it is. Uh, we'll have less of the 50 milligram if you don't mind. There's 54 milligram in this and I'm enjoying it. Thank you all the same. <laughs> no, joke. Carry on. Another 72 mil milligram on Nick base, but could live with 54. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's just a comment I had to have. I quit my pants. Says when I was a child, I did, I enjoyed sucking on raw bacon rashers. So flavour is very subjective. Raw bacon rashers. Have you yeah. got? Just that's just wrong. <laughs> so many levels. Yeah. Uh, Twiglet says kids that emulate an adult behaviour, so bubblegum etc. Should put them off. Okay. Fergus Mason says, yes, all concentrates and ready mix should be subject to batch testing and have vapor constituents listed. Mm -hmm. Formigo says, 50 milligram would be acceptable for me. I prefer using 18, but I can imagine people mixing or just vaping at 45. 
very boring, says no nick team limit other than state levels, hours for instance, purity testing for ingredients and juice and clear labelling on ingredients and origin of ingredients available from vendors, online standard chip packaging of course, flavour should be clear of known dangerous to inhale chemicals and research needs to be done on flavourings like Dr. Faustinus is doing. And Alan Fletcher said no adverts required as long as we can remain in forums and still have vapour trails. Thank you for that one, Alan. Um, and I'll end my first batch there. Cats feed a meal load more as we speak. We've got a hell of a team, have we not? We certainly it's have. brilliant the way everybody pulls together. It's brilliant the way chat pulls together as well. I know yeah. I've said it before. And somebody actually accused me of blowing smoke up people's backsides. I'm not. Mm -mm. Seriously. If it wasn't for chat, we wouldn't be here. What would be the point? No. <laughs> Just be sitting talking to ourselves. As we frequently do. Yeah, well, yeah, true. In, in fact, Sunday's show was pretty much Dave and me talking to ourselves. <laughs> there you go. Um, right, now, here's the thing. If if this review is going to go ahead, um, and as I say, it's just what I'm hearing, that there's no guarantee that that's what's going to be the outcome. But if, if they're going to say, right, well, let's review this in two years, let's go with something borderline sensible for the minute, and review it in two years, which strikes me pretty much as being parking Article 18, but in a lay-by, not in a car park, if you understand what I mean, ready just to roar off. We, we, we do need to know what needs to be, you know, parked in the lay-by and ready to go. If it's going to happen inside two years, 18 months to two years for all of this kind of thing, the evidence and everything to be uh, pulled together, then there's still time to get it enacted before the three years if they want to and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, if the rumours are to be believed, I'm good with that. But that also gives time for the Ad Advertising Standards Authority to do its consultation, which is why I picked up on the watershed bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, the Advertising Standards Authority, ESA, is going to be doing a consultation exercise in 2014 with the specific remit of looking at how electronic cigarettes ought to be advertised. And I'm now going to make reference to the VIP advert that went out on telly after the watershed. I think everybody's seen it. I'm not going to play it in. Because, basically because I don't want Kat to come round here and smack me over the head with a table. Because she will, because she doesn't like it. Um, but what they did, as I understand it, from an interview that I read, was that they pulled together possibly... Well, let, let me say first off, you never give offence. Offence is taken. But I think they put together something that they thought people would take offence at, but which still stayed perfectly within the extant ASA guidelines for advertising, bearing in mind the judgments that had been posed onto E-Lights and, and the various other ones that happened earlier on this year. Um, and what, what good it's done them, I have no clue. I just don't know. But the ASA wants to do something about that. So that that's probably going to inform the whole of the of the, the evidence. But while I've been sitting here looking at this and thinking about this and listening to what you were saying, it's just occurred to me, does anybody have a, have a bit of deja vu? Do we not recall that the MHRA did a consultation, was it three years ago now, Sav? Yeah. And after, what was it, 12 months, less than 12 months, decided that they were going to review it two years down the line. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yes, it certainly does. There's a parallel, isn't there? There is. And I think that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the opportunity, possibly, if this all goes through, as, as it's currently stated, um, so well led to believe, if it goes through as it's currently stated, it gives us the opportunity to inform. Now, I would hope, against hope, that they would seek to consult with the stakeholders. And the major stakeholders in all of this are you. It's mm -hmm. you. It's the people that are watching this. It's the people that are using e-cigs. 
Now, there are other stakeholders as well, and I've been talking to... I'm just going to say a public health body, but, and I'm not going to name names or anything like that, and I'm, I'm not going to divulge the full extent of the conversation. But let me just say that this public health body is quite influential, and they have the same take as we do. And I'm going to leave it there. It's, from that point of view, this has been quite a positive day for me. It's been confusing, to say the least, because I didn't see that coming that's come today. Um, and I didn't see coming what I got in the conversation either. And there's going to be some, I feel, events happening that will surprise a lot of people. Events that can't come too soon for me, but if I'm to believe what I've been told, there's going to be some very, very positive um, developments, shall we say, probably after Christmas. And having teased you a little bit with that, we're going to go to the adverts, and then when we come back out the adverts, I've got a little bit of good news for you, and then we'll continue with this little consultation. Just before I go there, anything else from chat we need to handle, Sav? I've got another batch of info from chat, if you want to run through that before we go to the ads. Yes, absolutely. Right, hang on, I've just got to... By little batch, I mean huge batch <laughs> <from> chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that is little by our chat standards, no doubt. Yes, it is. Um, Lena Marie Popper Torsen says, 72 milligram for mixing purposes, but for products ready for use, I'm not certain what the limit should be. Personally, I vape around 14 to 16, so I'm not a high milligram demandee. 54.1. <laughs> Lacey Vapor says 18 year old restrictions should be enforced uh, no restrictions on flavours 75 milligram base as is vendor sales up to 45 milligram with traceable data and test report no restrictions on cross border sales no restriction on advertising but must mention contain Nick now I'm not sure if Lazy Vapor said all that or if I just copied it down weirdly but somebody said it fair um, enough Nelly Scroggett says, advertising after the watershed, allow pics of um, the kits and can state an alternative to lit tobacco. Vanessa said, no juice can be sold that has not been manufactured in a professional, clean environment. Ed Morgan said, if there's a ban on ads, could that be a backdoor method to shut down shows like Vapor Trills? This is something we should watch very closely. Miles Dolphin says 54 milligram adverts the same as the way they advertise alcohol. Flavors allowed until they're proved harmful, if they're proved harmful. Mm -hmm. um, Whip it up 69, 72 milligram Nick base, leave flavors alone, need refillable tanks. Lamental says whitelist stroke black mist on chemicals and flavors, leave the Nick level as it is, no drug flavors or drug references. Uh, Johnny Lavery said, as long as an ad says only for smokers, it's fine. Nick, 75, question mark, okay, but 50 for compromise. Buffer, flavourless, absolutely essential, but insist on GCMS testing. Um, I don't know who said this because I've cut the name off, but it says, if they're advertised in limited 18 plus, why worry about juice names? Morrigan 1972 says, childproof caps, maybe something like an MSDS sheet included when buying juice. Um, again, I don't know who said this. I think nothing should be left for state regulations because we never know which government gets corrupted and bans anything in their own countries. Yoda 1970 says, 75 milligram nick limit, no change on flavours, no ads on TVs, we don't need them anyway. Um, Fergus Mason, we don't need ads. What about the 10 million, 10 million smokers? Question mark. Morgan says, because the anti's fear is a reason, um, if they can whip people into a frenzy about children, they can accomplish anything they want to. Right, that's the last of that batch. We can now have the adverts. You can breathe. <laughs> I can. <laughs> I tell you what, they go down a lot, aren't they? They are bloody right. brilliant. While we digest that little lot. <laughs> Refill your cartomizers and your tanks. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
weather and iVeather Alexa. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iVeather.co.uk and iVeather-Alexa.co.uk. iVeather and iVeather-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of VeatherTrails.tv. And we're back, we're back, we're back in the room. Welcome back to VT Talk with me, Dave Dawn, and the effervescent loveliness, the bountilicious babe that is the one and only Sav. You thought you were getting away with I that, didn't did, you? I did, I thought I'd got away with that yeah. one today. Never gonna happen, never gonna <gasps> happen. During the, during the course of the adverts, I've seen them. So we talk, Sav and I. Um, and apparently in chat, there are two topics that are more or less over pair and everything else. One is yeah. advertising. And two is the need for testing on juice. So let's hit the advertising one first. And I'm going to say I have a vested interest in this. I, I like to be transparent. If there is to be no advertising of e-cigs, we can't function. Because the wording that was in the proposal is so broad. It's so broadly worded that it actually would outlaw what we do certainly within Europe. Given what's currently happening with the FDA in the States, relocating to the States might not be a possibility. We may actually have to put service somewhere like Tuvalu or whatever, and we will look at that. But I also think that proper advertising, and this is, this is just my personal opinion, everybody can feel absolutely free to uh, oppose it because opinions are like bottoms. Everybody has one, but the majority of them stink. So there's no guarantee I'm right. But I do think that properly targeted advertising after the watershed, as has been said, will expose e-cigs and the various different kinds of e-cigs to people that might not otherwise find out of them. And, and, and th there is a case in point. I, w I was, you might know of, um, the venue where we have the knees meets these days. What's it called, Sav? The New Crown. The New Crown Hotel in South Shields. I was there last night meeting with someone to talk about e-cigs and, and so on and so forth. And sat not six foot away from where I was, was a quite attractive young lady with her young man in tow. And every 25, 30 minutes, they got up, they went out, and after a fag, they came back and sat down and carried on their drinking and their conversation, as you would. The third time they came back, she says, it's all right for you, you don't have to go out with them. I said, well, if you had one, you wouldn't need to go out either. And then came the strangest thing. She obviously knew that what we were doing was all right. And I was, yeah, I had that with me. And you know me, I don't hide it. There's no such thing as stealth as far as I'm concerned. It's just not possible, to do, not with this kind of setup, it's not possible. So she obviously knew that what I was doing was all right because the manager hadn't said boo, but she said, what is it? And I thought, okay, it, it's an electronic cigarette, it's an e-cig. I call it an e-cig rather than electronic cigarette, it's an e-cig. How does that work? So I told her, and she had a go. She says, ooh, you get away with that, but it's a bit big, isn't it? I said, well, you can get smaller ones. And as it happens, I had an e-mode with me. So I got that out. Oh, she says, mmm. She had a card. She got a, she got a card. If you're watching, welcome. Um, and she may be looking into it. So even though she knew about, I presume, the fact that there are things you can use indoors in pubs where smoking is banned and it's as good as smoking. She didn't really or didn't seem to know what they were. And that's interesting because if you can advertise to people like that, the take up is likely to be increased. I'd like your thoughts. I really would like your thoughts. I know we've gotten to where we are now as a community worldwide, more or less, without a great deal of advertising. But I just wonder whether it's 
that important or whether it's worthwhile opposing because it's a restriction that makes no sense. And again, as I say, I would like your thoughts. What we got, Sav? Right, I'll rattle through this next lot of stuff that I've got. Um, I'll try and keep it to the advertising and things. Um, well, this one first I said I was going to read out from Dream Vape House. It says, all vendor stroke resellers should be registered with a recognised trade body, but licence not necessary. Um, Lazy Vape House says, if you ban advertising, then sports suffers again from lack of sponsorship. Interesting point. Uh, Alan Fletcher said, well, let's say no TV, radio and press ads, only in our own literature. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. So that's that's hang on, because that, that's worth picking up. Is that dedicated e-cig mags and dedicated e-cig shows that that, that 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 so you know what you're buying into before you see any advertising? It's not going to take you by surprise. Is that what he means? Is that what you mean? I think so. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. I think so. Um, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Um, oh yes, I agree with images of the kits. This is uh, Lena Marie Popper Torson, but I don't think glorifying it is necessary. The product speaks for itself. Matt CLK says, personally, I think decent advertising, not just TV, should be boosted. There are a lot of smokers out there that it would benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, all advertising, Moonit says, all advertising shall be prohibited except for Vapor Trails TV because they're all right. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Sputz has said, I think just have no ads on TV, so just in papers, on the net, in magazines, no need for TV, you don't see cigarettes on TV. Max Hytus says, if they ban advertising e cigs on TV and on vapor trails, then they should ban Nicorette ads on TV also. I would agree with that, but then, um, again, I'm biased because as far as I'm concerned, Nicorette's the work of the devil, it gives you tongue ulcers, doesn't work, overpriced, shoddy crap. Yep. Did I say that out loud? You did. Oh dear. <laughs> Stamina has said, I don't understand why children are mentioned with this. Kids will find a way for sure if they want to, but it's up to the parents to educa- educate the child. 18 and over only, children should be left out of the whole debate. Castello has said, ads are a great way to spread, spread the word. Natty Scroggett has said, agree to show kits other than cigar likes. Bads, he'd said, I'm definitely all for good quality ads to get the info out to everyone. Yes, um, it's worth mentioning. I was I was having sorry, just refilling the glass. I was having a conversation with somebody earlier on today, who suggested that in all of this regulation and advertising and everything else, it might be a damn good idea to treat the cigar likes like cigarettes, because all of the normalisation arguments and everything else that you hear are aimed at cigar likes, and you know the kind of product I'm on about. So if they had the same kind of regulatory framework as Tobacco or cigarettes, would that upset anybody if these, you know, the good stuff, if you like, the Generation 2, Generation 3, non cigarettes, because they, they can't normalise smoking. Although I have noticed as well, and other people may well have noticed, that there's been a slight change in the terminology now. It's now normalising smoking behaviours and smoking actions, which to me says it's an excuse if they keep on shifting the goalposts like that. But would anybody object to that? Separate regulation for looky lakeys and proper ones, what I would call a proper one. It's something to think about. Well, something Mark Shaw's just said, um, I said before, let them have the cigar lakes and leave the other stuff alone. Mm-hmm, yeah. But Morgan has said, how is this normalising smoking, even as an argument? Well, I mean, uh, again, I've got to say, I've, I've, I've been in, in uh, dialogues and conversations where Martin Dockrell from Ash has been, and he has been very, very, very vocal in saying that there is no way on the face of this planet that any ACIG normalises smoking as smoking, right? It normalises not smoking. It normalises vaping, if indeed it normalises anything at all. And the whole argument, I'm going to, it's not an argument, it's a bloody excuse, isn't it? What they're talking about is they're scared, some of these public health people are scared that people will take up an e-cig of some description and get away with it for a while, for however long, and then 
move back to smoking cigarettes or they'll dual fuel. They don't understand the whole dual fueling thing. They, they seem not to be able to get that every cigarette you don't smoke is a bonus for public health. They, they can't quite internalise that one. And that's maybe an area where they need to be edumificated. Stanley Unwin again. Um, and the other one, of course, is the gateway theory, which again, Ash has been very voluble about and said it doesn't exist. But still, there are public health people, and I'm not going to mention any names, Stan Glantz, <laughs> that are convinced that the gateway theory exists. Look, if there's any public health people watching and you want to test this out, find yourself a vapour that will lend you, I don't know, an ego battery with an Aspire on top. An ego twist would be a good one. Then you can turn it up and down and say it's not going to kill you. And get some Nick Free juice because you don't want to be addicted to nicotine. Not that you would be, but, you know, just in case. Seriously. And just have three or four talks of something that you like and then ask yourself, do I really want to take the fag that Dave Dawn insists I have three drags off after I've tried this gorgeous caramel lychee or marmite and banana or raspberry and sweaty sock or whatever it is that takes your fancy are you really going to go and suck something down your neck that tastes as though a camel's just farted in your mouth really sorry and that's that's built of experience i i've told the story before when my mum was told she was terminal i brought her home and she said, right, I'm going to have a fag. And I said, I would light it for her. And I vomited. And I used to smoke 60 a day. I cannot say for the life of me how anybody can find an ASIG that they are really comfortable with and really enjoy and then make the choice to go and light tobacco. Why on God's name would you? Seriously. It's like going out with Nicole Scherzinger and then changing your allegiance to Jensen Button. Why would you? <laughs> Wow, personally, but... Well, you might. Although, if you're going out with uh, Miss Schertzinger, I'd film it. <laughs> Right, I've had a couple more comments. I'll stick to the ones just about that subject for now, because I'm my papers getting all confused. Okay. Um, Kronos has said, agreed, Dave was thinking exactly this about the Gen 1 stuff earlier. The Morrigan 1972 says, once you allow one type to be thrown under the bus, it moves the goalposts even closer for us all being thrown under the bus. Kronos has also said, the best way to keep smoking denormalised is to make the devices look as different as possible. Mark Shaw says, we're back to the end game argument. Leanna Lawless has said, the adver they advertise dual fueling with NRT and they say that it's good. Yes. Lazy Vapor said, the problem as I see it is you let the EU or the MHRA make any rules and it's the first step that leads to more. And Stamina has said, they should understand an alternative to smoking is better than no alternative at all. Absolutely right. And I've got to, I've got to say, the slippery slope does worry me. On the face of it, um, the idea of regulating lucky lakeys in the same way cigarettes are regulated, and bear in mind, tobacco cigarettes are barely regulated. It's mostly advertising. The rest of it, there's really not a great deal of regulation there. All right, they've got the plain packs coming through, there's no menthol, and so on and so forth, if everything comes to, to fruition. But really, there's not a fat lot of regulation on them. It's mostly to do with advertising. Um, but again, it's great to get your views on this, and I'm hoping that there'll be lots of conversations going on on the social media and the forums and the Twitter and, and, and everywhere else. That'll all be good. Um, I, I don't know that we need to pick much more up out of, out of that last little lot, Sav. Is there anything that stands out that you think we um, want to really look not at? Not really. Uh, there's a lot of um, the same sort of arguments going back and forth. I think we've pretty much covered all of it. Okay, that's brilliant. I'll keep my eye on Twitter and, and, and various other places to see how that conversation progresses because if it's happening out in the open, you can guarantee that the people who need to know this stuff will be able to tune into it. Hashtag EU, hashtag eSigs. They're the ones they're watching. And hashtag no eSig ban on Twitter. We'll hold, hold off on the EU eSig ban one until the 15th. There are all kinds of reasons for that, which I won't go into here. Otherwise, they'll probably get banned off of there. There is good news. Did you know the good news? Shall I tell? I'll tell everybody the good news. Sure. There's good news. 
You know that Andy Sutton fella? I've heard of him, aye. Aye, he's coming back. Yay! Not for too many shows, but he is coming back. Here's a little trailer. We're on a highway to hell! <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> if he's playing music like that every show, in between clips and in his bits and bobs, I'm tuning in for that. That's going to be on Saturday nights, coming to you very soon. Not this Saturday, uh, but Saturday before Christmas and after Christmas, we believe. Uh, it's down to Andy's schedules. I am so waiting to watch Swaff Confidential. It will be to vaping what Doctor Who Confidential is to the Doctor. BBC or something. Yes. Was that? I do apologise if I deafened anybody doing the ACDC thing, but we want them at number one before Christmas as well. <laughs> Can't help it. Was a rocker. Um, juice. 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 During the course of uh, all of the replies that Sav read out earlier on, there were a number talking about juice quality and juice standards. Have you got any handy there, Sav? Oh, that was cruel. I know. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I've got eight pages of <laughs> comments. Should, should I have mentioned that before we played the trailer in? Possibly, yeah. i tell you what I'll do. This is what's... Hey, I've got one. Oh, go Fingers on. Mason. All concentrates are ready mixed should be subject to batch testing and have vape back and stitch can up things, ingredients listed. <laughs> I can't even get the bloody word. Stanley Unwood again. Look, I tell yeah. you what, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have dropped that on you like that. <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick blast of adverts and when we come back, Savile have got everything in a proper order. You see, somebody once accused us of rehearsing this show. <laughs> now you know. We'll be back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. And we're back in the room, here on the uh, 11th of December, fortnight before Christmas. Sav has now got her ducks in a row. Sav, it's over to you. 
some of them. I think one of them got away, but I've got a couple of ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I got a comment a while ago from Olgit who says regarding um, home mixers, this should all be regulated as we have no idea of the quality of the juice or the state of the rooms that the juices are mixed in. Um, so all that should be done under regulation. I've also got a few comments that I've picked out. Vanessa said no juice should be sold that has not been manufactured in a professional clean environment. Uh-huh. The mental said there should be a white list or black list on the chemicals and the flavorings. Um, again, um, flavors are absolutely essential, but insist on GCMS testing. Basically, people want to know that their juice is being mixed in clean environment under guidelines, some sort of safety guidelines, so that they know what they're getting. They want a list of flavors. They want a list of what goes on. They want to be able to trace back where things come from if that's going to be sold on to somebody else. Indeed. Now, and it, it, this, is, this is quite important. I think, in fact, I think it's very important. I'm not sure about a white list because a white list is a list that you can't use anything that's not on it. So, how does that I'm not sure how well that would work, if you get what, mean, what I'm meaning. As yeah. in, people are trying various different, uh, different flavourings and obviously they'll be looking at the MSDs on them and all of that kind of stuff. I do, however, like the idea of a blacklist. That is a list of chemicals or substances or additives that you cannot use. And if that is done scientifically, as in, um, you can't use... Uh, I forgot the name of the stuff now that gives you popcorn lung. Um, yeah. But that, you can't use that because it gives you popcorn lung and it's known to. And there would be other things that you couldn't use, acrylene, ethylene glycol, blah, 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 blah. If that blacklist is there, then that's very easily checked against. A white list is not easily checked against. I also like the idea of GCMS testing on batches. That's also... Um, very useful and it doesn't necessarily mean that the the production line for want of a better term needs to terminate in a GCMS machine if you've got all of the ingredients all five of them that are pre um, passed pre GCMS batch tested and sealed when you get them from trusted wholesale suppliers and you've got all of the traceability there then if you are producing in somewhere that conforms to, say, the food hygiene safety standards, which are already out there and are already well understood by trading standards, then you have the opportunity to be able to prove that, yes, but you would, you would still want, you know, if you're mixing five gallons up, then two or three hundred quid off to a public lab that will do the job properly or a private lab that will do the job properly is probably money well spent because at that point in time, it would be good, I think, for the consumer to be able to say, I want to see your batch test certificates for the batch that this is coming from. And if there's a batch number on and everything conforms, then that's fine. And it would also mean that trading standards, if there was somebody who people suspected was operating incorrectly, they could give them that bottle with that batch number on and that could be tested. It would all be traceable back. And I think from the point of view of public safety, our safety, because we're breathing this stuff in, that's not a bad idea. Um, and I'd, yes, I do like that. I, I, I do like the idea that, that, you know, there's some kind of safety testing on what we're using. And that, at the bottom line, is actually probably the most important part. There's a lot more work needs to be done yet in terms of the constituent parts of e-liquid and the temperatures at which it's vaporized that does need to be looked at and there may but that's that, that's the kind of technology that's going to come as we go further down the road i mean when you get a look at the likes of these you know these have all got some pretty good electronics in them and it's not beyond the wit of man to work out that if you've got a 2.6 ohm coil for instance running it at 15 volts or very many watts is quite likely to produce let's say acrylene from glycerin so it might look at 2.6 ohms and go actually no you can't go above 18 watts as a figure 
because that would produce too much heat and it might produce acrolein. So that's that's but that's something that will come further down the road, and it's something that you know is a good thing in many ways. Is there much coming in from chat on this? Yeah, there's uh, a good discussion going on in chat, but a few things that have also been mentioned is Dan McDee said juice bottles should all have the triangle on as well, um, for blind people especially. Oh, it's CLP regulations, but that's, that's already part and parcel of the regulations, the 17 different directives that ECs already have to abide by. That's already part of it. That's yep. already enshrined, and they should all have the race triangle. Yeah, that's exactly what Ashmal Pass brought up. He says those regs already exist, though, don't they, under uh, trading standards and various other bodies. Mm. Um, Blaze has brought up something else, um, not just about the juice, but also things like the wicking materials and the atti materials. That's, that, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, up until I went across to Ireland and got my first cotton wool wick, I was very, very suspicious of them. Now... How far down the road are we? Three, four weeks down the road from being over there. And it doesn't take a great deal of, of using of them to understand how they work. And I'm here to tell you, and Savile back me up on this one, the one thing you aren't going to get with a cotton wool wick is a dry hit. Oh, God, no. <laughs> if, if anything, if anything, it'll over wick. Yeah. And it, d don't take my word for it. Don't even take Sav's word for it. Get all the cat. <laughs> and if, if you are a mature adult that's fairly broad-minded in terms of language, <laughs> she'll tell you. Oh, yeah. She'll tell you. <laughs> Absolutely right, she will. Overwicking, I think, is probably the most polite of the phrases that she used. And she's not wrong. She's not wrong. It does work exceptionally well. But again, this is all part and parcel of the development and the research that's going on. So, yes, um, I think broad guidelines as to how juice evaporates, if you like, at given temperatures. And there's, there's got to be an upper limit of temperature beyond which you should not go with let's say 50-50 juice, there'll be a, a different temperature that you shouldn't go beyond with 70-30 or 60-40 or 80-20 or whatever the, the constituent parts is. And I've said for a while that the only bit that we don't really understand is the flavouring. That's the only bit we don't really understand. The rest we know. We know the chemistry of, of uh, glycerin. We know the chemistry of uh, propylene glycol. We know the chemistry of nicotine. And if you don't know the chemistry of water, where have you been? The only bit we really don't know, or we don't really, really know, is the flavouring stuff. And that, I think, is where the blacklist would come in. That's where the JCMS testing really, really helps. Sorry, I interrupted you there, Sav. Go on. It's quite all right. Again, there's an awful lot of conversation going on. Um, I think I was up to Lamental who said, I can see it, ver it being very difficult to um, do all this testing due to the different chemical reactions that could potentially occur between, oh, I can't say that word, between the, <laughs> the constituents. <laughs> constituents, oh, that. The parts. The bits, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mark Shaw said again uh, what you brought up that food hygiene is a good framework to go from Lena Marie Popper Torsen says honestly we have something that's called uh, safety documents that's sent out with chemical bases sold in Norway wouldn't it be any harder than sending a copy from the batch when you get a bottle mm -hmm. and Blaze has come up with an idea which I quite like he says you just need one of those little black and white square pictogram things on the bottle to scan, which leads you to the data sheets. Oh, a, Q, a QR code. Yes. That, that's that's, that's what very a great idea. Who said that? That was Blaze. Well done. QR code. Scan a QR code and it takes you to the MSD sheet, and, the, and the, that's brilliant. Isn't it? That's an absolutely brilliant idea. That is so clever. Quick, patent it, <laughs> <laughs> copyright it. I said it first. That's a fabulous idea. That is a fabulous idea. So, if, actually, if you think about it, under the CLP regulations, and which is kind of the, the next stage on from CHIP, CHIP is UK, CLP is Pan European. If the CLP regulations had this QR code thing in as well, 
um, for anything that, where one of the constituent parts appears on the poisons register. How much easier would that make it? Not just for, for juice, just take it a stage beyond that and go to bleachers and, and, and all of the other caustic and, and poisonous materials that we've got under the sink and in the bathrooms. You take that into wherever you take whoever it is that's ingested what they shouldn't have. They QR code it and not only does it come up with that but it also says, yeah, Flushy's guts out with... 15 pints of milk and a bottle of orange juice and juice vomiting and uh, put his eyes back in the socket when you're finished. That would be brilliant. That is a brilliant idea. I'd never even thought of that. That's so no clever. Order. I mean, yes, obviously you would need a smartphone for that to work, but still a brilliant, brilliant idea. I think the NHS can afford them. Yes, uh, <laughs> you'd like to think. I'm sure Jeremy Hunt's got one. <laughs> I did pronounce that right, didn't I? You did. No, you said right, Hunt. Hunt. Yes. Um, <laughs> MJ Jones has said, um, at least you need batch testing on the base nicotine that is used, at minimum, that mm. has to be, at the minimum, minimum that we do. Minimum, yes. And Mark Shaw says, we do need guidelines and they need to be enforced, but if people want complete safety, then it's simple, don't vape. Again, yes, couldn't have put it better myself, absolutely right, if you ain't sure, don't do it. It's why I don't jump out of aeroplanes with a parachute on. Because you're supposed to pack your own. I can't even wrap Christmas presents, never mind something that's going to save my life. So I just don't do it. Um, the thing about it is, I've just realised, because we've not got very long to go, so... I've just noticed it. <laughs> I don't know where the time's gone. No, me neither. It has just occurred to me that if there were any MAPs or MPs or members of the European Commission sitting watching this show tonight, they would see that the vapors, not just of the UK, but of Europe, because we've got people here from all over Europe, the vapors of Europe would welcome proportionate regulation. That, I think, has been more than amply demonstrated tonight. And I think if they were to read back through chat, they would see that vapors throughout Europe are absolutely amongst the most sensible people you would come across. I'm going to say this, and I know you, you, you haven't been over-selective in what you've pulled out tonight. It, it's been a good cross-section of, 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 of stuff that's come out. Nobody has said, bugger off and leave us alone, we know best. They've all said, yes, sensible and proportional and proportionate regulation is a good thing. Europe, please take note. Commission, please take note. MPs, MEPs, MHRA, please take note. As a body, as a community, the vapours of the EU are the biggest stakeholder in the conversation that you as MEPs and the Commission and MPs and Ministers are having at the moment. Their voice should be heard. Nothing about us without us. That should be your watchword. And on that note, I always throw it across to chat for the last word. Sav, give it yeah. to me baby. The last word tonight comes from Entropy72 who says, Yep, we're not stupid. We're not cowboys. We want protection. We want regulation. But only the right regulation. And that, I think, says it all. Until tomorrow night from me and until next week from Sav and I, uh, please don't forget to tune in to the rest of the shows that we have on. I do apologise to all of my fellow presenters, but I've run out of time to play in the new trailer. I will promise, I promise, I promise, I promise I'll play it in tomorrow night. Um, once again, can I thank you, Sav, and the team behind you for doing the cracking job you've done tonight. I yeah, really, Kat really appreciate it. Yeah, has been awesome tonight. Just amazing. And I want to say a special big thank you to everybody in chat tonight. Because you've been more helpful than you know to a man who came into the show confused as all hell. But now, I think, I know what you want. 
and I'm going to make my voice heard to make sure, as far as I possibly can, that that is what you get with your help. Thank you so much. You have no idea what it means to me. Until we see you next time, from Sav, the rest of the team, and myself, take care, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. See you next time.